Hi and welcome to the Streamlit channel. Those of you who are on this channel and might recognize me, I am William Mattingly. I'm the host of Python Tutorials for the Digital Humanities, where I post content on Streamlit and natural language processing for the most part, uh, specifically around the Python library Spacey. Now in this video, I'm gonna be covering something a little bit different. Normally I post more academic-y or more um, uh, research-based uh, applications with Streamlit. In this video, we're gonna be talking about something a little bit more fun, a little bit more practical, and probably has a, a wider audience. And that's gonna be how to create an app that does some very basic but very useful uh, Instagram hashtag analysis and generation for us. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually a medievalist by training. And the reason why I made this app was because I recently started posting uh, some Instagram content as I travel across Europe on uh, the medieval world. And you can find this on TikTok, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And the reason why I came up with this app is because I'm terrible at coming up with uh, hashtags that are relevant to the content. I don't like doing it, and I wanted a simpler way to actually generate these things. And so I came up with a step-by-step -step guide for how to do this, which is gonna be posted as a blog post on Streamlit's blogs. And I thought I'd make an app or a video to go along with this application and that blog post. So unlike my other videos, this is not gonna be live coded. We're gonna walk through the code step-by-step -step and explain what its purpose is, how it works. And we're gonna also explain some of the more complex Streamlit processes along the way so that you can take this application and use it for something else. Specifically, how to dynamically create buttons and Streamlit widgets. So what is this app supposed to do? Well, it can allow me to dynamically create multiple tags. So like I said, my content is usually on some medieval stuff. So let's say I wanted to grab uh, the tag medieval, the tag Spain, uh, actually it's changes to Portugal, which is where I'm at right now. Uh, let's say I wanted to grab Lagos, Portugal, to be more specific. And I also wanted to grab something like castle. There's a castle here. Now for each one of these tags, which are gonna be my root base tags, I can generate a set of tags based off of them. And I'm gonna say I wanna grab the top five most similar hashtags to these initial inputs. I can select create hashtags, and what Streamlit is going to be doing right now is it's gonna be going out and doing a couple calls to a couple different websites, and it's gonna generate some hashtags for me. So I've asked it to create essentially 20 hashtags, and we provided those right here in the output. And I'll zoom in just a little bit so we can kind of see all this. The other thing that this does is it separates everything out into individual tabs. So I can see the tags generated by Medieval, the tags generated from Portugal, uh, the tags generated from Lagos, Portugal, and the tags generated from Castle. So I can break these down by my categories. And again, these tabs are dynamically generated. So the amount of, of inputs that I want, the amount of tags I'll receive. And again, we also have a very simple graph from Seaborn and Plotly. It's just a simple bar chart that also tells me how frequently these hashtags are used. Because apparently one of the key things to hashtags is that you wanna have some that are used in the millions, some in the hundreds of thousands, and some that are a bit lower. So this is a great, great way to just quickly visualize uh, the data. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and talk about how this app actually works. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Streamlit, you'll know that ST title, after we've imported everything, will give us a very simple title. Nothing about this app is meant to be aesthetically amazing. It's meant to be purely functional. Uh, the bit that's actually very important here, however, is the way in which we scrape data off the web. That's the, the key to this application. It's going out and doing some calls for us to a couple different servers simultaneously. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand how frequently a hashtag is actually used on Instagram, for example. And we can do that by using the Instagram website. Now, if we actually use the, uh, the website instagram.com slash explore slash tags slash whichever uh, tag we actually want to use, we are given something that looks like this. It'll tell us how many times a, um, a hashtag has actually been used on their platform. Now, when you scrape Instagram, it's got a lot of things to do bot detection, and so all this data is not actually displayed for you. It's gonna be populated with JavaScript. However, what you can do is you can access uh, the meta tag and in its content, you're able to actually grab the amount of times the hashtag is used with an M to represent billions or millions and a B to represent billions. 
What this function does, get count, is it goes through and scrapes the web automatically for you and grabs that data and then reassembles it. So it replaces a B with the right amount of zeros and M with the right amount of zeros so that you know the quantity of times that a hashtag is actually used. But that's not just what the app does. It also needs to generate hashtags that are similar to a, a root hashtag. And this is where a second website comes in. Now, there's a lot of websites out there that do this. I chose this one kind of at random. It's called best-hashtags.com. And again, on slash hashtag slash whatever the tag is, you can automatically generate a list of hashtags and they're going to be populated for you down here. And it's going to have ads on the site. I can't get rid of those. Uh, but what I can do is I can scrape this site by automatically generating it and then retrieving the results. Now, if you notice on the actual input, we're able to grab the top in number of results. So the user is able to not only have a, an initial attack, but also the top five. This is going to grab, in this case, the top five from this actual output. So in other words, by scraping just these two sites, we're able to know how many times a hashtag is used on Instagram and the, uh, the most similar hashtags alongside of them. And again, these are being generated from two separate sites. So these functions will handle all of this for us. The next function that we see here is our load data function. This is gonna load up a very simple JSON database that's going to allow us to store information. And uh, so for example, specifically, the amount of times a hashtag is used and the most similar hashtags to it. This is so we don't have to constantly make new calls to the servers for information that we've already retrieved essentially. And if we notice for the web scraping, we're sticking with something simple here, requests and beautiful soup. There's a very simple reason for this. Uh, what we're doing isn't too complex. We don't need to uh, load up any JavaScript. We don't need to dynamically load a page. So we're not gonna be using requests-html, which can have problems being implemented in something like Jupyter Notebook because of it's the way it uses async. We're also not gonna be using Selenium, which can be difficult to get up and running on individual machines and OSs. So we're sticking with requests and beautiful soup here because of their easy, to implement, easy use and easy implementation across a wide variety of devices. So that gets past kind of the, the backbones of the app. And the overall design, what we're doing is we're gonna populate a number of input tags with an input slider or sorry, a number input. And that's what this function is right here, which allows for us to select the number of tags that we want to dynamically populate. As we take this number up, we notice that we have the ability to input new slides. As we take it down, we remove that number. So this is where our header comes in now, where we populate these two separate columns right here, column one and column two. And what we can do is we can iterate over with range the number of uh, tags that we actually have. And notice here, this is the trick to dynamically creating Streamlit widgets. We are setting a unique key value with, in this case, the I value as we tick up in our range loop for loop. So we are able to make sure that we have a unique key for each widget that we've dynamically created. But we need to do one thing more. We need to actually store that widget somehow in Streamlit or in Python so that we can actually access that widget later on and use its data. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to store your data into lists in this case, because we have two separate sets of widgets. In this case, we're storing them in tags and sizes. So these are actually lists that contain Streamlit widgets, which means we can index these lists and access the data from them as we do things in our app. Now, once we have the ability, to, once we have everything that we wanted uh, to create created, we can hit this create hashtag button and we can see this right here in line 52. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through and create our first tab for us, which is going to be in this case, all. So this is all of our hashtags and then dynamically create a new tab for each of our individual hashtags. Again, grabbing the data populated from this tags widget right here. As we go through, we're going to be using our scraping functions to go out and grab data for each of these hashtags and store them in our data uh, object, which is simply our JSON uh, database. And as we go through, we're able to then populate those results as a pandas data frame and also sort all the values out 
and then produce a chart that we see down here. So in other words, what this application does is it dynamically creates a collection of different widgets in the sidebar and then uses those widget inputs to go out and scrape the web for you automatically. The output is placed into a text area to make it easier to display and also easier to uh, copy and paste your data once it's populated. And we can see this right here in line 69. And notice again that we are dynamically iterating over each individual tab to populate the results here by ticking up plus one. And the reason why we're ticking up plus one is because our tabs start off with an all section that contains all of the hashtag data. So real quickly, that's how we can generate a hashtag application in Streamlit using some basic web scraping functions. That's gonna be all for this video. If you like this content, check out my YouTube channel, Python Tutorials for the Digital Human Humanities, where I kind of go over a lot of this in much more detail and much more depth. If you wanna learn more about this application, jump on over to the linked Streamlit blog post where I cover this information in a bit more detail. Thanks for listening and keep on Streamlitting.